Welcome to Unit 6, Video 3, Ions and Isotopes. By the end of this video, you should know what an ion is and how it is different from a neutral atom. You should know what an isotope is and how they are different from one another. And you should be able to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an atom or ion given isotope notation. Let's begin with ions. An ion is a charged atom. It's charged because one or more electrons has been added or removed from the atom. So we have three atoms down the bottom here. Notice in the first atom we have nine protons and nine electrons. This has an even balance of positive and negative charge. Therefore, it's neutral. It is not an ion. However, look at the second atom here. Here we still have nine protons, but instead of nine electrons, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten electrons. Because we have one more electron than protons, we have a negative one charge, since we have nine positives and ten negatives. In this third atom here, we still have nine protons, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Since we have nine positives and eight negatives, that gives us an overall positive one charge. It's this imbalance between positives and negatives that create ions. It's important to note that in each case, the number of protons remained the same. Recall the number of protons determines what element you have. The number of electrons, however, can change without the element changing. Only the charge changes when the electrons change. Let's look at some specific examples now. Here's a neutral atom of fluorine. In a neutral atom of fluorine, we have nine protons. That actually was the atom we were just looking at. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine protons. And we have nine electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Therefore, it's a neutral atom right now. In order to create an F minus ion, which is the most common ion formed by fluorine, we'll still have nine protons but we'll have gained an electron. So now we have nine plus one, which gives us 10 electrons. Fluoride has gained an electron to become F minus or F minus one. It is possible for ions to have charges larger than plus or minus one, but for right now, we'll just look at plus and minus one. Now consider a neutral atom of sodium. A neutral atom of sodium has 11 protons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 11 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. However, if sodium loses an electron, it still has 11 protons, but it's down to 10 electrons giving us an Na plus ion, because there's now one more positive than there is negative. So ions can be formed through the gain of electrons, which gives us a negative ion, or from the loss of electrons, which gives us a positive ion. We'll talk more later about why some atoms tend to gain electrons while others tend to lose them. We'll also look in more detail at ions that are formed through the gain or loss of more than one electron. But for now, it's important to realize that this gain and loss of electrons leads to an imbalance in charge and the formation of an ion. Moving on now to isotopes, so far we've only changed things outside of the nucleus. But it is possible to have some differences within the nucleus of an atom. Isotopes are atoms of the, with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. Because they have the same number of protons, they are the same element. Because remember, protons determines what element we have. The only thing that is different here is the number of neutrons. So would this affect the atom's charge? Well, since neutrons are neutral, 
This should not affect the atom's charge. Well, it affects the atom's mass. Recall that most of the atom's mass is made up of protons and neutrons, so yes, this will affect the atom's mass. Consider the three isotopes of hydrogen. The first isotope, and by far the most abundant in nature, is hydrogen with one proton and no neutrons. Because it has one proton and no neutrons, it has a mass number of one, because one plus zero is one. Therefore, we call this hydrogen one, or just plain old hydrogen. Compare this to deuterium, which is far less abundant in the universe. Deuterium has one proton and one neutron, giving it a mass number of two. Therefore, we call this hydrogen two. Because hydrogen is such a common element, we've actually given specific names to each isotope, though you don't have to know these. Hydrogen two is sufficient, but this is also called deuterium. Finally, a very, very, very uncommon isotope, not very abundant in nature, is tritium. Tritium has one proton and two neutrons, giving it a mass number of three. So we can call this hydrogen three. It's important to note that isotopes are not different versions of an original. Just like twins and triplets are not versions of an original, they're twins of each other and triplets of each other, all three of these isotopes are isotopes of each other. We can use a special notation to determine which isotope we're working with and whether or not that isotope is also an ion. Here you see that notation. We have a superscript of the mass number on the left-hand side and a subscript of the atomic number on the left-hand side. A superscript on the right-hand side indicates the charge. If nothing is written there, you can assume that the charge is zero. So here, this tells us that because our atomic number is one, we have one proton. Since its charge is zero and its atomic number is one, we must have one electron. And since it has a mass number of three, we can subtract our atomic number to get our number of neutrons, which in this case is two. Here's some examples to try on your own. Let's do the first together, then you can pause the video and try the rest. Here we're asked to determine the number of protons, which I abbreviate as P positive, the number of electrons, which I abbreviate as E negative, and the number of neutrons, which I abbreviate as N zero, since neutrons are neutral. Since we have an atomic number of 12, we know that we must have 12 protons. If the atom were neutral, we'd also have 12 electrons, but since it has a positive two charge, we know it must have gained or lost some electrons. In order to gain a positive two charge, since electrons are negative, it must have lost two electrons, giving us a total of 10 electrons, 12 minus two. This should make sense. In order to have a positive two charge, the atom must have two more positive protons than it has negative electrons. Finally, to determine the number of neutrons, we can subtract the atomic number from the mass number, and we're left with 12 neutrons. Notice here the number of neutrons is equal to the number of protons and electrons in a neutral atom, but that's not always true. You do need to calculate this number. Pause the video here and try the rest. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned what an ion is and how it differs from a neutral atom. Recall an ion is a charged atom that's gained or lost an electron or two. Then we learned what an isotope was. Recall that isotopes are atoms of an element with a different number of neutrons from one another, therefore having a different mass number. And then we learned how to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an atom, given its isotope notation.